Oregon's governor has big plans to rebuild the state's prison system. The new corrections package was unveiled in Salem today. And as Ann Jacker reports, it could amount to the biggest buildup in prison space in the state's history. Governor Goldschmidt wants 1,100 new prison beds, and he wants lottery money to fund it. Goldschmidt says crime is giving Oregon a bad reputation. Oregon's economic development director agrees. I don't think that we as Oregonians can afford to uh, allow that to continue, and I think we need to do whatever's necessary. And if that's to use $60 million of the lottery funds, and I think the governor's taking the lead, I think we ought to do it. The new prison beds would be built at Eastern Oregon State Prison, the state pen, an unspecified county jail, and 500 beds at a new minimum security facility, but not near Portland or Salem. Ideally, you want a, a, big, a big highway nearby, and you want a community of sufficient size that you can uh, support the staff needs. Goldschmidt says it's a continuation of the largest prison expansion in Oregon history. Since 1987, the state has spent $20 million on prisons, nearly a million dollars outside Portland for a minimum security facility, $16 million to renovate the Eastern Oregon State Prison in Pendleton, and $3.6 million for a jail in Baker. But prisons aren't the only concern. Goldschmidt also wants to spend $46 million to beef up the state police narcotics unit, fund more electronic bracelets for house arrests, and put more beds in the state hospital for criminally insane. For all this, he'll need the legislature's okay to break the spending limit. But I think they are going to discover that the promises that collectively we're making to one another around this state to deal with a crime problem are not going to be inexpensive to handle, and uh, you're going to see it in this budget, and I think you will see it in other places as well. The governor's total price tag for his proposed corrections package, $100 million. But he can't do it alone. He'll not only need lawmakers' approval for the money, he'll need their continuing commitment to finance the programs once they're operating. And Jagger, News 8. Meanwhile, new proposals to change the way criminals are sentenced in Oregon began their public airing today. If adopted by the legislature, the new sentencing guidelines would mean those convicted for violent crimes would spend more time behind bars. Now, repeat offenders would face a mandatory sentence of over nine years. Currently, those offenders are spending an average of less than five years in prison. But those convicted of less violent crimes could be serving less time. It's a parole matrix and essentially takes the parole board out of the, uh, out of the factor of trying to make the, uh, the uh, decision of what the length of sentence would be and eliminates them from that decision. But at the first of a series of hearings today, not everybody thought new guidelines were a solution. We bury ourselves in the statistical clinical purity of a predictive chart and expect to solve the problem of crime, which is essentially a human and social problem. Even supporters admit, however, that for the guidelines to work well, more prison space is needed.